Was anybody listening to my presentation in Helsinki in the autumn? Anybody? Yep, a couple of guys. Okay, so I was talking about uh, working with big partners and I basically couldn't say anything because we hadn't announced any partners, so it was a difficult talk to have uh, back at that time. Uh, this time around I wanted to, you know, repay, pay back for that and uh, just put it in the title. That we're working with CCP and Improbable. There it is. Um, and uh, I guess the, the title is Creating Next Gen Mobile MMOs. I'm going to talk about that. Why we're working on MMOs and why with these partners and what's, uh, what's the whole partnership about. But first of all, I'm Lasse Seppanen. Welcome to this session. I've worked in games for 20 years now. I started as a game designer, ended up a CEO. Not much of an improvement. I don't get to do any of the fun stuff anymore. But uh, my career has basically been about an ambition to create new things, to push the industry forward. Uh, I worked in both mobile and AAA. And uh, for instance, I worked six years at Remedy Entertainment heading as executive producer of a project called Alan Wake. Uh, one of the uh, games that uh, had an original angle to it and that had a long tail of sales. And I've been always fascinated with that long tail of sales with an original game. But without further ado, let's talk about PlayRaven a little bit. So we are based in Helsinki. This is our fifth anniversary. We're about to have a fifth birthday party very soon, end of this month. And uh, we are based in Helsinki, over the rooftops there, as you can see. Very comfy, with a AAA mobile background, like me, but there's also many other people there who have worked in both worlds. We released three games and we were focused on MMOs right now. These are the titles we have released so far. So from 2014 to 2016 we launched three games. And I like to think of this as the maturing of our company. So we started from a relatively naive new guy, you know, new company, new team. So awesome, we get to do whatever we want, sort of an approach. And we made a game that was pure single player. Hit top five strategy in more than 100 countries, but we were not really happy with the long tail. Then we made a couple of other games where Robocide hit number one strategy in the US, 41 countries in total, number one. Top five in more than 100 countries again, and Winter State, more than 100 countries, top five. And these games had multiplayer in them, but we still were, had a sort of a sig significant single player aspect to these games. And again, we saw improvement, but we were not happy with, you know, we thought that, you know, we are, we are breaking new ground for sure. We have fans who really love these games, but it's just not, you know, having that long tail that we want. So a year ago, a little bit over a year ago, we made this big shift in strategy and decided, okay, let's leave single player alone. Let's just get rid of it altogether. Let's focus on multiplayer and social. This is really our approach now. Our mission has always been to discover the next big thing in mobile. We don't, do, uh, we don't work on derivatives, like a 10-person better clash of clans, whatever that would mean. Uh, our ambition is to create something like uh, Coca-Cola. When it entered the market, it wasn't a mix of strawberry soda with lemon soda. So if you mix a couple of best-selling sodas, you get the next best-selling soda. No, rather, you would work on an original formula, but you would test the formula. So what Pemberton, who invented Coca-Cola, did, he would go back and forth, the soda fountain where he had actual customers, and his own basement where he could remix his soda. And he would test with actual customers until he got it right. And he created a new category of soda. It's not a variant of strawberry or lemon or any other soda. That's really the ambition we have. Can we make something like that? A game which then spawns a whole category and other developers will want to work in that category. The way we're approaching this lofty mission is focusing on MMOs and social experiences and a very important key thing that we added a year ago is 
we are working with partners and external IPs where it makes sense for that mission. So once again, making uh, various IP-based uh, games that would be, let's say, a reskin of an existing game uh, to an IP wouldn't be a really a good match with our culture and our team. Whereas an ambitious partner that wants to break new ground with their IP would be the ideal partner for us. So of course, once we had made that decision, we would have to do a lot of this. Just going to events like Pocket Gamer, talking to a lot of people, and seeing who shares that ambition, who wants to go the extra mile, find a new thing. And one place where we really, of course, immediately resonated very well was CCP. CCP very famous for EVE Online, a, a unique game. There is no other. We've all read the stories about the backstabbings, the CFO stealing all the money from the corporation. But it's a desktop game, and uh, we wanted to create something new inspired by EVE Online. So we talked with CCP and came up with a concept that they liked and which is breaking new ground while being set in the EVE Online universe. It's a really an amazing opportunity, like a once in a lifetime thing. It is the first time when CCP has worked with an external developer and for us it's an amazing opportunity to create something into a, such a well-known universe with creative license so that we don't have to just play safe every single angle. We already tested this. You remember the inventor of Coca-Cola tested with the real people. So in October when we announced this with CCP at EVE Vegas, a big fan event where you have a thousand EVE Online uh, sort of uh, the most active hardcore players. We went on stage and together with CCP's producer we announced the game. And that was, uh, I gotta say, a little bit uh, uh, stressful moment, you know. PC uh, gamers and mobile games don't always mix well. Uh, but it went really well and the thing we did was surprise them we told them that they can try the game themselves. All they had to do is open their email and install, you know, click on the link and install in their own phone. And this was a pre-alpha of the game. It's a scary, scary proposition for any developer. Hey, let's just expose our pre-alpha to the actual cost customers. Uh, I don't know if it scales, I don't know if it works, you know, it's gonna crash, it's not gonna be fun, whatever. But we got really, really good engagement metrics and I'm super happy we did this. And maybe with some other uh, partner, we, we wouldn't have been able to do this. But CCP and us, we were aligned that we have to put this to the people. We have to get the feedback. We have to understand if we're going in the right direction with this game. And I think the, the metrics really proved our direction. We come a, come a <clears throat> come some uh, distance from that moment now. But if I just tell you a few basic things about the game, as much as I can share right here, these are from the pre-alpha, by the way, the, the one we had in Las Vegas, these screenshots. So I want to stress that they are not final quality uh, by a long shot. Uh, but you basically have a space station of your own. That's a key difference to EVE Online. Even in EVE Online you have a spaceship that you pilot you might have multiple spaceships, but you always pilot a spaceship. You don't pilot a spaceship at all in this game. It's an entirely different game set in the same universe, uh, inspired by the emotions created by EVE Online. And here you can produce various things, materials and so on, uh, resources, uh, but most importantly, uh, spaceships. You can have your own little fleet of spaceships. This is the star map. So here you can see all these little things. They're not really visible back there, but they're all space stations, so they're players. And it's an MMO. It's a social MMO. We don't want to leave anybody behind, so we made sure that everybody joins a corporation when they click play. 
So they are part of a guild, which is called a, a corporation in the game, and they already have multiple enemy corporations in the vicinity. So there is a need to coordinate uh, with fellow players. There are, there are many things you can do on your own, of course, mining, little asteroids and so on. But really the important things and the big payoff things, like mining whole moons, require you to work together with the other players in your corporation. And moon drilling is a good example of a, um, an activity where it's beneficial for a lot of corporation uh, mates to, to join and drill the same moon, but also it makes them vulnerable. It's an easy target for rival corporations to attack. So then you might go into a little bit like a role that, hey, why don't you guys defend the moon while we mine it and uh, maybe we do something else to divert their attention at the same time. And then finally, if you look at just a visual look, we've added more color, we've simplified some of the designs. Uh, mobile users, users, we feel, and the glossy screens that you use outdoors and so on, instead of a dark dungeon um, where you've drawn down the curtains and so on. You need to have certain design changes made to the, just to the look. So all in all, it's, it's pretty amazing to be working on this game and we don't, we don't have a set launch date that I could share here, but stay tuned for news that are coming in the near future. Also, I want to touch on our other partnership that we announced in December. This one is uh, trickier to share because we haven't announced the game. So I'll just have to leave you guessing a little bit. But it's called Project Metro and we are working with Improbable, the technology company. They, uh, they did raise some money last year. I don't know if anybody heard about it. Uh, what did they raise? Anybody? 500 million? Yeah. Sounds about right. Yeah. So uh, they are building this little technology called Spatial OS. And it's a fascinating, fascinating thing. Our ambition really is this. We are the first developer on mobile who wants to work on Spatial OS. And that's why we, we felt that we want to reach out to Improbable and work together with them. And they felt the same way that it's beneficial for them to have a partner who is an actual game developer. Um, I can't really talk about the game itself, but I can talk about the potential of the technology. So if you are not very familiar with Spatial OS, the idea is that it's a cloud technology that allows for massive scalability. Basically, you can put all your players, all your assets, all your buildings, whatever you have in your game, in a single sharded MMO. And this means that you can make player run worlds that have actual simulated economies or activity loops and so on. If you compare it to something like a traditional MMO like uh, let's say World of Warcraft, it's heavily scripted. It's almost like a single player scripted experience that you can share that somebody else is doing the same uh, scripted experience next to you. But what Spatial always promises is this massive, massive scale where you can put all the players all their activities, everything in one world. And essentially that's what EVE Online is uh, in its own way um, on desktop. Persistence is another very important key thing. So if you play a traditional MMO, uh, if you kill an orc, the system has to get rid of that body. It has to disappear because there's not going to be any chance of keeping all the persistent information stored somewhere. There's just not enough space there anywhere. Uh, Spatial OS solves this problem and uh, of course for us it's a fascinating possibility. And then finally simulation. So they allow for simulating, putting a lot of, a lot of uh, simulated objects in the game. So let's, let me just give you a simple example. This is not from our, from our game because we haven't announced it so I can't really share that. But massive scale. Let's think about a vast, vast fantasy world covered in forests. Now put in the players, they can cut down the, the trees, they can make warships out of them. Now 
those cut down areas are going to remain cut down until the simulation kicks in and at some point they're going to start growing. But all that wood that you gather, it's going to continue its way in the ecosystem. So that warship, you know, it might come into a battle with a lot of other warships and eventually it's going to get destroyed. Maybe it, it's a shipwreck on the beach, but still you might be able to use it. You take that wood and you use it to, to make uh, whatever, like firewood or anything like that. And then imagine the possibilities for the game, game developer. If you want to create big events in the world, how about a forest fire? If you unleash forest fires in a world where the economy is heavily based on the, this wood cycle thing, it's just creating experiences that are pretty much impossible with the sort of permanent, the, the, um, like a scripted, uh, normal, old-fashioned ways of working. Of course, uh, it's a challenge because on mobile, we just can't expose the player to all the complexity that you might be able to get away with on PC or, or a desktop or even a console. So we got to make sure that all of this doesn't interfere with the very simple usability experience that you can get in, you can get out quickly. You don't have to worry about it too much. But then again, the simulation is going to be running in the background while you're away, things will happen. And that's part of the magic. You want to go back there and see what's happened. Finally, so those were the partnerships we have right now. Of course, we're looking into other things as well. We are always, are always looking for the next big thing. And the, the couple of things we are looking into right now in more like an R&D mode is geolocation and AR. Think about Pokemon Go. It's a, it has been a very successful uh, game. However, the technology and the capabilities in terms of geolocation and AR, they're quite rudimentary at the moment. It's very inaccurate. Um, and the promise of the next generation, what are we going to have in, let's say, two years? We've been talking to tech companies that are working in this area, and we think uh, we can get to persistent indoor environments. We can get to very precise positioning of objects. There's some magic tricks that can be done in that area. And even if not all these uh, dreams become true in two years, some of them will, and some of them will be integrated into the platforms. So what we're looking into right now is not what we would do with the current generation of AR and geolocation, but what we would do with the next generation. And that's a very, very fascinating area. Because if you have that precise positioning and precise reading of the geometry of these uh, areas like this, then you can build uh, AR experiences that are seamless with the real world. You could put objects in this room and they would be just a natural part of it and maybe even difficult to locate or see them unless you know what you're looking for. Depends on the game that you're building. Now, of course, the other thing that we are very much fascinated with uh, is blockchain. So everybody's heard of crypt cryptocurrencies. That's one aspect of blockchain. But for us, it's really a question of what's the frontier? What, what's the, what kind of game experiences can we create that would be a category creating new kind of experience? And I have to say, today was the first time I was having a business meeting. First time somebody from the other side of the table said, so uh, we're really interested in blockchain. Do you have any ideas? And, you know, that's just the way it is. Uh, it is coming one way or another. And uh, we have some people looking into it as well. Let's see. You know, you've got to look at many ideas to come up with one good one. So that's where we are. And I've got to say it's super exciting time to be a game developer in this space. Uh, when I was starting out 20 years ago, I couldn't have imagined anything like the blockchain, let alone, you know, being able to position anybody anywhere on the globe and put some game assets into that environment. So, yeah, it's a great time for all of us. Thank you. Any questions?